वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग फंड ऑफ फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ 8051 जीरो फाइव वन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई बी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू पिन डायग्राम ऑफ माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एट जीरो फाइव वन माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स यू शुड सी दिस वीडियो टिल लास्ट द रीजन इज बेस्ड ऑन पिन डायग्राम ऑफ एट जीरो फाइव वन यू कैन सॉल्व मैनी क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एट जीरो फाइव वन सो यू जस्ट सी दिस वीडियो टिल लास्ट सो दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड एक्जैक्टली हाउ एट जीरो फाइव वन फंक्शन एंड देर कुड बी मैनी क्वेश्चन दैट यू कैन रिजोल्व बेस्ड ऑन दिस वीडियो लेट आर सी ईच एंड एवरी पिन इन ग्रेट डिटेल्स स्टेप बाय स्टेप सो हियर एट जीरो फाइव वन दैट वी पावर अप विथ दिस टू पिन्स वी सी सी एंड वी एस एस हियर वी प्रोवाइड वी सी सी विथ फाइव वोल्टेज एंड वी एस एस विथ रेफरेंस मीन्स ग्राउंड सो दैट इज टू पावर अप दिस एट जीरो फाइव वन हियर अनदर टू टर्मिनल्स एक्सलेट वन एंड एक्सलेट टू दैट वी यूज इट to provide crystal clock to 8051 here you will be observing 12 megahertz of crystal clock that we provide it with 8051 and when you have serial communication at that time we operate at frequency 11.0592 megahertz and that we have it because of we wanted to operate at universal baud rates so here you should know some standards are there for universal baud rates with uart as well as with many serial communication techniques like 9600 baud rate is available so here to operate at all those baud rates you should have crystal frequency to be operated at 11.592 megahertz so in serial communication this crystal will be operating at this frequency usually you can say it will be operated at 12 megahertz of crystal clock here you will be having reset terminal that you can give it to 8051 for reset of 8051 when you reset this 8051 at the time program counter of this 8051 that becomes 0000 hex that is called reset vector address here my dear students when you reset 8051 at the time initially it executes bios programs and that we it executes to set up the system so it makes system ready for user like when you reset your pc at that time it executes bios program during that bios program what it does it set up the system and it makes system to be ready for user so same thing is happening with 8051 but you should know when you reset over here at that time program counter will become 0000 hex that is vector address of reset and it will execute bios program which are there at memory location which is there at this address here when we talk about ale so ale signal that will be provided by 8051 why it is provided by 8051 the reason is when you interface external memory at that time you will be having address and data and here with 8051 AD0 to AD7, those are time multiplexed address data. So to separate address and data, we need to have address latch enable signal. So 8051 gives this signal, which indicates as if it is equals to one. Then over the buses of AD0 to AD7, you will be having addresses, and as if ALE is equals to zero, in that case AD0 to AD7 that will be carrying data. so that is how address latch enable that is essential while you interface memory with 8051 here my dear students one more interesting terminal that we give it to 8051 that is ea bar here you should know my dear students 8051 that is having internal rom of 4kb right it will be having internal rom of 4kb and as if you want to interface external rom then also it is possible but when you provide external rom at that time what are the addresses that you need to understand like see by default addressing of internal rom that will start from 0000 hex and it will go up to 0 ffff hex as per 4kb here my dear students as if ea bar if it is equals to 0 what it means we will be discarding internal rom 
So whatever program that we are storing that will be there with external ROM only and that address will start from 0000 hex. At max with 8051 we can interface 64 KB of external ROM and as if you want to discard internal ROM then you should make this EA bar is equals to 0. Here as if you provide EA bar is equals to 1 what it means you will be using internal ROM of 4 KB. So obviously internal addressing that will be there and that will start from 0000, 0, 0, 0 hex it will go up to 0 FFFF hex and that will be there for this internal 4 KB of ROM and further if you interface memory over here with 8051 then it cannot have this addressing. So you will have to use external ROM with the address range that will start from here onwards. So from this next address will be 1000 hex and from then onwards you can use external ROM. So when you give EA bar is equals to 0 at that time you will be discarding internal ROM and when you give EA bar is equals to 1 at that time you will be using internal ROM and it is not like when you use internal ROM you cannot use external ROM you can use but for that you will have to provide separate addressing. When you use external ROM only at that time you can start external ROM address from 0000, 0, 0, 0 hex. Right. Now my dear students PSEN bar that is very interesting terminal that is program status enable terminal. This terminal that we use to read data from external ROM. Here my dear students when you have external ROM at that time obviously with external ROM what we will be storing programs 8051 that is based on Howard architecture. So for program we use ROM and for data we use RAM. Here my dear students for ROM we just need to read data from the ROM for that we use this terminal PSEN. Here you will be surprised when we talk about reading data at that time my dear students 8051 provides memory read with ROM as well as it provides memory read with RAM as well but for RAM it will be having separate signals right like you see 8051 that is having address is A0 to A15 with which we can interface 64 KB of external ROM as well as 64 KB of external RAM. Here in total you can use same address for both of this RAM and ROM. So you can interface 128 KB of memory space and usually you should know my dear students same addressing cannot be used with memory when you interface it with microcontroller or microprocessor but as 8051 is based on Howard architecture you can have same addresses for ROM as well as RAM right how the reason is same address ranges will be there but to read data from the ROM you will be using PSEN bar signal and to read and write data on RAM you will be having separate read and write bar signals right. So here PSEN bar that is referred as program status enable why the reason is it is used to read program status from external ROM. If you don't have PSEN bar then you will have to use read bar signal which is common for RAM and ROM. In that case you cannot have same address range for RAM and ROM. But here we can have same addresses for RAM and ROM. Why the reason is to have read operation from ROM we have PSEN bar and to read and write from RAM we have separate signals. Those are read bar and write bar that I'll explain you in this video only later it will come. Now my dear students let me explain you ports. So 8051 is having four ports port 0, port 1, port 2 and port 3. Port 0, port 1, port 2, port 3 all are bit addressable. Bit addressable means what? Those are 8 bits of port that is having pins as per P then for port 0 it will be P 0.0. .0 P0.1 likewise it will be up to P0.7. Port 1 will be having bit addressable port as per P1.0 
1.1 up to P 1.7. That is how we have four ports. Each port is having eight pins. So here, first of all, let me explain you port zero. Port zero is having multiple functionality. It can work as IO port. It can work as byte operation. It can work as one bit operation as well, as well as it will be having address delta time multiplexed line. So this is port zero, which is working as IO port, as well as you will be having address data lines. If you want to separate address data, then ALE is there, right? And this same pins of 8051 that can be operated as IO port, right? So when you work as address data at that time, you should know first it will give address and then it will give data. And that is what we can understand based on ALE terminal. Here, my dear students, port 1, that is as per P1.0 to P1.7, it can be there as per 1 bit operation, it can be there as per 1 byte operation. In byte operation, you can have all 8 pins. In bit operation, single pin can be used as it is used with P0 port. But here, my dear students, you should understand port 1 is not having multiple functionalities as it is there with port 0. Like port 0 can work as IO port as well as it is having address data lines. Port 1 is only having IO port. It can be there as per byte operation, it can be there as per bit operation, right? But it is not having any alternate functions. Now, when we talk about port 2, then you should know, my dear students, Port 2 is also bit addressable, it is also byte addressable. Here, you can have multiple functions with port 2, like as port 0 was carrying address data along with IO port. Similarly, with port 2, you can have port 2 as well as it will be having addresses which is there from A8 to A15, right? So, in total, with 8051, we can have addresses from A0 to A15, means 16 address lines are there and 8 data lines are there. Those are time multiplexed and these ports are also used as IO ports, right? Now, my dear students, when we talk about port 3, then that is also similar to other ports, but it is also having multiple alternate functions, right? This port 3 can be bit addressable as well as byte addressable. Single pin can be used like P3.0, P3.2. Likewise, you can use any pin. But along with this, there are some multiple functions. Let us see all those functions step by step. So you see this P3.0, P3.1 that is used with serial communication that is also having RDX and TDX line. What it means? Serial receive data and serial transmit data. That is how these two pins are used for serial communication. Here, you will be observing this P3.2 and P3.3 that is also used for interrupt. So, two hardware interrupts are there, INT0 and INT1. And here, by default, you should know INT0 that is having higher priority compared to INT1. So, these two pins that can also be operated with respect to interrupts. Here, port 3 with P3.4 and P3.5, we have T0 and T1 in which you can take clock input to timers. You should know 8051 is having two 16 bits of timers. And as if you want to use those timers as counter, then you can provide clock at T0 and T1 terminal those are also port P3.4 and 3.5 bits. So this can be used as IO port as well as we can use it that at as a clock input to this timers. Here, when we talk about another two pins, so that is what read bar and write bar that is there at P3.6, which is there with write bar and P3.7 that is at as read bar. This is what we are using it to read and write data onto external RAM. So you see, when you want to read data from external ROM, you have PSEN bar, right? But when you want to read and write data on external RAM, at that time you have read bar and write bar. Here, my dear students, you should know 8051. That is based on Howard architecture. So here in Howard architecture, program and data memory is separate. 
program memory is there with ROM that is controlled by this PSEN bar with external memory and data memory that will be there with RAM and that is been controlled by this read bar and write bar signals right that is how it is there and these lines are technically merged with this port 3 only right so multiple functions are there with port 3 here only port 1 that is what used as a normal port otherwise other ports are having multiple functionalities so in total 8051 that is having 40 pins you can observe 40 pins are there but you see with this ports there are many functionalities address data lines are there as well as port here address lines are there as well as port here port is there as well as many functionalities are there so in total we are saving many hardware pins by having multiple functionalities on same ports so this is how pin diagram is there still if you have any further queries what i want is you just post that queries in comment box so that we can have further discussion thank you so much for watching this video